Well, good evening, traders. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend and ready for another wonderful week in the market. I need a sight and sound check, please. Let me know if you can hear me and you can see the intro slide. All right, thank you very much. Good evening, Walter. How you doing, Bob? Okay. All right, let's get started here. Um, we're going to be looking at the week ahead and there <clears throat> we'll give you a disclaimer here that these are examples are for educational purposes only and that trading involves the risk of loss of capital. All right, a little bit about my background. I'm going to quickly tell you that I'm an ex-U.S. Air Force fighter pilot with master's degrees in both computers and in business. I've been an active trader since 1998 and a full-time trader since 2009. Um, technical uh, trader, but I do use some limited fundamentals. We'll talk about that when we go over some of the charts. I do moderate for H&R candlesticks and run candlesticks from time to time. And I do provide one-on-one -on -one mentoring if you would like to give a, uh, get a, <clears throat> excuse me, a um, free no obligation uh, chat, uh, just let me know. All right, hit and run candlesticks. Basically, uh, let you know that there's going to be a special offer at the end of this presentation. We've got hit and run candlesticks, right way options, and probably the best scanner uh, value out there that I have run across. And I've been doing this uh, quite some time and I'm really impressed with what uh, product they have out there. All right, we're going to cover the academic calendar and earnings calendar, a uh, little market overview. I'll put out a few trade ideas. They're uh, somewhat sketchy out there, and I'll talk about that in detail. We'll do a not stock specific Q&A first, and then a look at your stocks, time permitting, but I definitely have to be out of here by 9 p.m., so we're gonna talk fast. Economic reports for the upcoming week. Uh, Monday, PMI, 9.45, 15 minutes after the open. ISM at 10 and construction spending also at 10. On Tuesday throughout the day, we're going to get motor vehicle sales numbers and factory orders uh, at 10 o'clock. On Wednesday, you got the ADP employment numbers at 8.15 and the ISM non-manufacturing and uh, at 10, followed by the petroleum report at 10.30. Uh, international trade, 8.30 on Thursday, along with jobless claims and productivity and costs. And finally on Friday, the employment situation, which is the monthly report for May at 8.30. All right, earnings calendar. Uh, what are you talking about? This one right here? No, that one is, um, I use it from Econo Day. And then I look at anything that is red or green. The, peop the ones that are black don't probably move the markets enough for me. Uh, but check that out and we'll uh, maybe stop on over there in just a second. Uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, I'll pop it up right here. This is the calendar. And what you do if you go to Canada.com. Come on down to the um, U.S. announcements. View full calendar. You're welcome, Michael. And that's where you'll be able to see it. And that's where you'll be able to find things like uh, the FOMC and those kinds of things coming out. We do have the Beige Book out at 2 p.m. on Wednesday the 5th. It hasn't been a, a big market mover in quite some time, so I left it off. All right, let's pull that out of the way. Get back to our slides. Uh, earnings calendar. And earnings uh, I get from briefing.com. Uh, to get, be able to look at it, you do have to sign up, but it is free. And they don't spam you um, like, like some do. And we're going to look at the week of June 3rd to the 7th at 
that's already moved over. So now this week will be this week. And you'll be able to see full listings for each of those before and after the open. This only on Monday after the close. And I put um, earnings uh, in categories of after the close on Monday plus before the open on Tuesday or both on Tuesday kind of a group. So that's what we have there. And then I filter them out uh, for volume and average to range. And then I do take a look at the uh, short interest ratio out there because you can get some pretty good moves out there. So there's nothing on the calendar for Monday. The ones that catch my eye here are Coop and Cal on Tuesday. Tiffany could move too. Uh, Wednesday, Amber, Campbell Soup, you know, both high short interest. The others could move. Uh, Sienna, I like on Thursday. We'll see what happens there. Home, MDB, SFIX, SIG, and UNFI all over 10% or higher short interest. And Friday's guests and ZM both have high short interest. Um, so let's go. Okay, let's go look at the markets. I'm going to pull this slide up here. And we are, as some people were posting, um, okay, short interest. That's a good question. Why don't we pull that up? Okay. Two places to find it. I have a stock screener out here. Uh, I'm using Finviz, again, free. I put in all of the stocks for the week and then went over here to ownership. I use float for short interest and anything about 10% or higher makes my lift. So we have 11 of them this week. Okay, that uh, I see are worth monitoring. Now, if, let's see that guess is one. Okay, let me bring that up over here. All right, and what it does is it trades 1.8 million shares, so in the average two range is 68 cents, so it's pretty good. What potentially could happen is if this stock reports a surprise, we're kind of looking at somewhat semblance of a, uh, a double bottom here. If it does a surprise and breaks a downtrend, I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to draw the trend line here. If it jumps up above that, we could then, uh, anything over about $18, get a pretty good rally. And again, above 19, um, we could actually get a big rally up here in the 20, 50 to $21 range, or even higher. Now, the reason I uh, try to watch for those is I'm trying to look for a change in sentiment. I try to look for a change in the most recent trend and this trend has been down so this one could uh, could get some other people um, uh, you were looking for the others uh, let me get in just a second John David um, uh, above that we're probably going to get a little bit of a rally and why are we going to get a rally well you're going to get some people that are um, have been waiting for the news to be released for earnings. They're going to jump on the bandwagon because they've been watching it. The people who have had it and, and wrote it down a little bit here, they're, they're saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I don't have to sell. So they're going to hang on to it. And anybody who's short may have, say, an 18 to 18 and a quarter level that they're going to bail out. They're not going to let it go much further. So you have an impetus of people wanting to jump in when you have a high short interest. All right, now let's go back over to, all right, Finviz. All right, you can get in there and you uh, can register free. They don't bother you that much. 
and you can get access uh, to a number of different things. I'll let you uh, figure out. We uh, talked about Econo Day, and the other one's briefing.com. I, I, they may, uh, but Jen, I, I use uh, Thinkorswim uh, for my futures, um, as well as I trade with Interactive Brokers uh, on the futures account. All right, so let's, uh, that explains a little bit about what we are doing with, um, with looking at the short interest. We'll go over that a little bit when we, uh, maybe when talk about some of the stocks, although none of them are reporting um, uh, very soon. Right in here, we're getting a gap down. We're getting a gap down towards an area. Now let me uh, go ahead and change the time frame here because, okay, let's do six months. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my chart here. These things that look like skyscrapers sitting on their side, and this, uh, I'll call it red line, the block right here, that's the highest volume we've had at that price level over the nine month period that we were looking at. Um, right here is a level we busted through, we noticed right here, we tried to hold this 2775. That 2775 was an area back in February that uh, acted as a congestion area and then we held uh, in late March. And we tried to hold in May, bounced, and tried to hold again here at the end of uh, May, and we lost it. Lost it really hard on Friday. Well, the next step it's going to go to is probably this level around 2740, 2725, somewhere in that area. So that's where I think we're probably headed, um, at least the next step. Uh, it doesn't mean that's where we're going to stop. We could go down to 2700 or so, um, but right now we're in a downtrend. I'm looking for continuations to the downtrend. I'm looking for bounces and any bounce that gets back up towards these moving averages that I use, the 17 or the 8, they set up uh, short opportunities. All right. um, let's look at, where are the other ones? Okay, let's go crude oil. Crude oil has been in a nasty, nasty decline here. We got all the way up to 66, and I had that marked before we even got up there. And then we kind of pulled back. I thought we would probably try to stabilize at 60, and we kind of did. But we could not get our head above the 63 and a half to 64 dollar level. We dropped down to the next level, did a bounce reversion to the mean, and we're driving down to the next level, which is right here around 52 dollars. Is that where it's going to stop? I have no earthly idea. Um, what I'm looking for on any of these is a continuation to the downside. I'm looking for a bounce, maybe a bounce up to 56 to 57 dollars and realize that crude oil and as well as gold, they tend to move uh, in large numbers. Uh, and what we're going to do is watch for this. That's still a little bit of bounce get up here and then give us a sell signal and then we can sh uh, short the, the puppy all right now what would it take for me to go long any of these I'm not going to do a counter trend rally although I could do an intraday trade on oil there's a pretty good void right here because this was a really significant drop let's look at the 30 minute chart you can see how we had drop to a level drop drop, drop. All rallies have basically been failed and a failure pattern. So we'd have to get up over 53.50 before I think we could go up to 55 
but still if I want to back out to an hourly chart or so even if I get up to 55 that's not getting me over the hump I've got to probably get up to this 55 and a half to 56 dollar level pull back and hold and then go you have any uh, volume issues I okay let me let me reposition my mic here is that any better there uh, Pam you're fading in and out. Well, if you're fading in and out, more than likely it's an inter... Um, it could be your internet connection, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll crank up the volume just a little bit. Thanks for letting me know. All right. Um, <laughs> a microphone problem. It's possible I'm not trying to shout. All right. Uh, that's crude oil. Here's gold. Now well, let's go back up to our dailies. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Gold back in November, December. We had a big rally up to 1350. And ever since then, we've basically been in a trading range from about 1270 to 1325. Thanks, James. Um, we did a pretty good, healthy rally here this last. Um, last week last couple of days i think the 1320 level is an area that we need to keep an eye on for it to possibly do a reversal and pull back what i'm looking for is a breakout above 1320 to attack the 1350 level and right now this 1310 to 1320 level is where i am going to be watching for a reversal and if you notice here, I do use Stochastic's RSI. I use a 7733 simple and use Wilder's uh, in that. And that helps me judge momentum. If you notice that most of the time when we get down at the bottom here, that's the bottom in price or an intermediate bottom. This one right here was a double bottom. Gave me a good clue that we are possibly going to get a rally in gold. But gold is very volatile. I do not use stochastics and I don't use an RSI. The stochastics, to me, um, they're too slow. And they, uh, I, I picked up on the stochastics RSI uh, primarily from Shande Kushar, he had his own, um, he's developed a number of different indicators. Uh, the Shande Momentum Oscillator, CMO, is one. I found that the TC2000 did not have CMO indicator. The Stochastics RSI was a pretty good, um, a, a pretty good close approximation of it. And so I uh, went to that and I've been there ever since. All I'm just trying to do is judge am I, am I at the bottom trying to come back up and I look price first and I get confirmation here. Let's look here at here about the first part of March where we kind of stabilized. It was looking at a double bottom, so to speak here with the volume at price at a price level and the stochastic started to curl up and right in here is where you, you go long. It really, it only lasted for about three days and then it had a hard pullback and then started going back up again. Got to give it a lot of room or take profits quickly. John, I'm not sure how uh, I could help you with that when you say sound is bad. I've, uh, maybe you'll have to pick up the recording when it comes out later. All right, let's uh, go on from gold. I'm going to look at the S&P. All right. All right, the S&P looks like it wants to come back here to the 27 and a quarter again. And it's basically the uh, beginning of uh, March. And we are in this continual downtrend. And we're going to stay in that trend until we can break probably 2820. I'm 
I'm not sure how. A lot of times, though, um, John M., that is a, um, but, well, no, if it was breaking up, that would probably be your internet. I have no earthly idea. <clears throat> I've got everything cranked up. It could be when I'm wait, looking away. What's 36? Yes, that's the shared volume from uh, Steve Combs. That's correct. Uh, for me, Stochastic RSI represents uh, momentum. And I look for this is oversold at the bottom and overbought potentially at the top. But primarily I use candlesticks and patterns there. And I use the Stochastic RSI as kind of a confirming or secondary indicator. All right, so I'd be looking that we're, we're way oversold. I'm looking for another bounce, similar to what we had over here in the uh, middle of May. I suspect that at some point along in here, we're going to get a rally. We're going to bounce up to somewhere around the 17 exponential, this magenta line here. It could be as high as 28.20. I'm not really sure, but I'll look at the levels as we get up there. And what I'm looking for potentially, let's get a um, marker here. I'm looking for us to get up to these levels, run into selling, profit taking, and then I'll look to see that we make a higher low and go higher. It's only with this break in, of that after establishing a higher low well, I think we've changed trend again. The trend will be down as long as we're making lower highs and lower lows. We will only change that trend and I will only be looking for more aggressive longs and more than just an intraday trade when I get higher highs and higher lows. Let's go look at the Dow real quick. I'm not a big fan of, tra of the, the Dow, although I will trade it, but I use the S&P 500 as my uh, go-to indicator for the markets. When I go the, but they both look roughly the same. Um, that's a good question, Jim. Could you, could you hold that one to the end, please? And ask that again, I'll be glad to show that to you under the uh, non-specific questions. Uh, these yellow dotted lines are levels that I chose, that I put out there, uh, happy. And um, those are either support or resistance lines. And they're my idea of where we had lows, like this one at 25,500, approximately there in first part of March, in the March, and then we did try to, we shot through it a little bit, then tried to hold it, and we bought and busted through it. Um, we did try to hold the 25,970, which were the tops over here in the middle of March. We did kind of pause here. We came back up and rallied to it. You notice that the markets tend to move in waves. That's why my Beach Boys uh, song, because I, we, we do move in waves. And it moves to prior levels. And in this case, on the way down, we'll go down to a support level, potentially break through it and then bounce. And where do we bounce up to and stop? We stop at resistance levels. So big time support and resistance. Uh, I'll be happy to show him, John David. Thank you, though. Okay. NASDAQ. NASDAQ looks a lot like the S&P. All the markets are looking roughly the same right now, except the, the uh, Russell, which we're gonna get into right now. And the Russell is a lot weaker. It's bro broken through. Let's look here on a nine month. You can see that we broke through the 
March lows, and we're approaching the lows at the beginning of January, or it's actually the intermediate level at January. I suspect that we'll get a bounce here, like we will in the others, and we'll bounce up to a reversion to the mean, and then we'll see after that pullback, or the pause, we'll see whether it's got any buying going to happen in it or not. We need to stop getting these um, tariff-related and economic slowdown uh, issues. Um, earnings are going to be one thing that are going to power individual stocks, and they're going to come up here in a couple weeks. But we're not going to get over it for the markets unless we you know, stop getting these uh, nasty surprises. I won't go over the VIX, spiders, or whatever. Okay, let's uh, minimize this puppy here. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to go over trade ideas. Now, I want to tell you there are long trade ideas and some short trade ideas. Now, they were, they were created before we opened. Uh, just because we're opening Sunday down doesn't mean that we'll open down on Monday morning but it is an indication of what we're doing right now in the sentiment. Um, just because I have a, a, the idea is a long trade idea, it's basically a, a, a stock to watch, a symbol to watch. I'll pick out levels that they have to break or pull back to before I will enter along, and I'll be very careful about it. I'll also potentially because we're in the markets are in a downtrend, I'm probably going to only go with a partial position and not a full position. But these are not recommendations to buy. They're just recommendations of kind of things you could look for uh, in the market and potentially those individual stocks and we'll go over them. And the short ideas, same, same. All right, let's go here. I'm gonna start off with shorts. The reason I'm going to start off with shorts is because we're pulling back. Okay. Now, one of the problems I've got is that the time to go short on a lot of these stocks has already passed. Now, we're kind of late in the game to be shorting most of the stocks, but I'm going to show you a few that still look like they may be shortable. Um, what I'm looking for is a potential rounded bottom breakout type of stuff with where we've done a, a, a substantial pullback and now we break up above the 50 day moving average and we're gonna climb and I'll cover that in a little bit. All right, Colgate, if it breaks 69.50, you know, 67.50 is probably in the cards. Owens Corning, if it breaks 48, we're probably headed to 45 and a half. Mullinex, if it breaks 109, it's kind of hard to tell where it's going to go, but it could go down to 100 pretty fast. Uh, you can see that the, the balance of power here has been negative. And I've watched uh, potentially this thing come back up to 112 or so and then roll back over. Uh, Moody score. Look for a break below 182.50. Where could it go? Maybe first level around 177 and a half. And most of these will be option plays for me. Fit B, um, the financials don't look so great. And a break in this 26.50 down to maybe 26 and a quarter. Could it go down to this 25 to 24.50 area? It sure could. Especially if we still see continue to see weakness in the uh, financial sector. All right, potential longs. AXS, well, Access Capital, it's kind of got a uh, move upwards. It's still going up while the markets are going down. It did a move up, a pullback. It had a really strong uh, move uh, on volume on Friday. Watch for a move back up to 59.75. Probably 75 cents to a buck in it. So you may not be able to swing it with a stop under 58.28. You may have to go here to where 
the hourly chart is and pick out a stop, say, in the 59.10 area. That's what I'd be looking at. All right, again, when you're, when, when we're trying to fight the trend, I use, I will either pass on longs and do none or limit my longs, limit the number of shares that I do and shorten my time frame. So when I'll look at a good daily, I might then trade on a 30 or 60 minute chart and get in and out on that chart. WCN still going up and waste connections have been going up for quite some time here. All right, so watch for the breakout here. And I think this all time high. We look at the area chart. Yep, all time high, at least for what I'm interested in. Uh, STOR, store capital. Let's look at the area chart. Again, all, t all time high. It's a, uh, a REIT basically looking at um, cubes. Cubicles, I mean, not cubicles. Um, rent, rental storage for people who put crap in there that they probably should have sold. <laughs> uh, look for a move above about 34.50 this, uh, and a move up to retest 35. 30 minute chart, I can see where that 34.50 to 34.45 area would be. 60 minutes. Going up here, 34.50, yep, that looks about the same. I'll get to you in just a second, David. Uh, WTR, all right, 2.25% uh, two, two, uh, forward yield. That's one of the reasons why this one's actually moving higher because the market's moving lower and it's a flight to safety. Flight to safety normally only works in the short term especially if we have rising interest rates, they'll move into that area. And then eventually, if we get into a bear market, the bear market will get all of them, including the dividend place. But we could be able to play this move. Now, the balance of power back here in uh, first part of May was pretty, pretty strong. Right now, it's kind of a mediocre. This, that could have been our last gas pub. Don't know. Be nimble. America Waterworks, also utility, 1.63%. Maybe over 113.50. It moves about a dollar and a half to a day, 1.3%. Another cube, storage uh, facilities. Uh, pretty decent bop here, back here on the end of May. Look for a move above 30 four dollars and we're at all-time highs and the last one I've got is high Q um, this one looks like it's trying to do a bottoming process and this was one that I found on my rounded bottom breakout scan um, Rick Sadler is a uh, great teacher and proponent of that scan to help find candidates basically what that is is where a stock has had a, a protracted downtrend and starts to bottom out. And you can tell that when it gets above the 50 day moving average and you look for a greater than 10% between the 50 and the 200. And I will also use the 100 period moving average here. If it's on a great distance, of course it is. Then I would look for it to move halfway up there, pull back and then move up again. Now, the whole idea is for it to break the 50 and move up and eventually tag the 200. All right. All right. Those are the stock candidates. And let's go back. I said that there will be a, uh, an offer for those who are not members. The uh, Hit and Run Candlesticks and the right way option, each of them have a two month trial, $49 each, um, basically about uh, 75, 80 cents a day. I think it's fantastic. Let's, uh, whoops, um, 
let me move that over. Copy it over. Sorry about that, Pam. All right. If you got the, if you've downloaded the presentation, uh, Bill, I don't run a room anymore. Not at all. Uh, there was a lack of interest, and um, I'm, I'm, my mother's dealing with some health issues, and I've been spending a lot of time with her, and not much time in trading at the moment. So that's that's where I am at the moment. Uh, Denny, the hit run candlesticks. If you go to that, you can. But hit and run candlesticks, H and R room, they're primarily focusing on stocks. They can use options to trade it, but they look at stocks. Doug Campbell looks at uh, trading options in a training there. He is probably the smartest and uh, most conservative options trader that I've run across uh, in my entire 20 plus years of trading. I would highly suggest you be able to. You go over there, even if you do nothing more than sign up for a, a 60 day trial and learn options. It is a cheap way to do it because he has um, lots of archives. He does uh, daily presentations. Uh, we talked about the current markets and current and every two weeks he um, uh, does a presentation and they're all archived. So it's really fantastic. <laughs> and you think his music is yours too. Well, most of it is. Uh, there are times where he and I uh, disagree a little bit on the uh, on the music there. But not, yeah, Doug is amazing. All right, now I'm going to open up to the questions. I passed up a few. I knew you guys were posting them there, but I wanted to continue and get through the presentation first. I want to know about any questions you have that are not sp uh, stock specific, i.e., People were talking about the volume profile in Thinkorswim. The volume profile, you go under studies. I want to do edit studies, even though I know I'm going to add it. Go over here and I'm going to do profile. Do volume profile. All right, under here, I go into the sprocket and I want to edit the puppy. And what I want to do is I want to make it automatic. I keep everything in here as normal as a, what you, just uh, straight out of the box, except the on expansion becomes no instead of yes. If you do yes on on expansion, it'll make the volume profile be on the far right hand side of the chart. And it is not easy to tell where the volume point of control is. I use 70, um, I think I think you 70, 30 for my uh, area. Oh, sorry, 80, 20 here for, sorry, for my area. And what I'll do is I, I want to show that point of control, which is that red line that you saw up there. Cancel this one because I don't want a duplicate. Any questions on that before we move on? Uh, I've used some of them um, to varying degrees of success or failure, Mr. Student of the Market. All right. Um, All right, that could be Bill. Um, David H. asked uh, how I was implementing the options. I, I tend to do a lot of straight call puts, directional plays. Um, the verticals, and you get these kind of moving I might do it, use a, a spread, vertical spread 
if the risk is too high. But when you do that, you do tend to um, to limit your profits. So I tend to do mostly directional trades. Uh, but if you want to do more than just that, or even want to do them on swing trades, uh, I strongly suggest getting in the room with uh, Doug and ask the question, go through his training. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I had my training before meeting Doug. 99.999% uh, of what Doug says is what I've been taught and come to uh, realize is the best way to trade options. It's basically you're using that as a vehicle, but you're looking at the trend and you're trading with the trend and you're using um, support and resistance levels to move between. All right, do we have any other questions that are not stock specific before I open it up for individual stocks? Um, well, yes and no. Let's look at, now the volume profile works very, very well for the futures and for very high volume S&P or Dow or NASDAQ stocks. We're talking about the S&P 500, S&P 100, uh, people that stocks that are in those, um, you know, very, very highly liquid. They will tend to move because they're owned by a lot of institutions. Um, but if you're looking about the markets here, you can see how we move between support and resistance levels and I'm looking at it there's a high volume level what do we do when we bounced here the middle of May we went right up to that 2888 why did I choose that because it was right smack dab in the middle of where this volume of price um, I'll call it skyscraper is and that's where the price is how to get in the background well, that's where you do the opacity. Let me do this for a study, edit studies, sprocket. And that's where I put my opacity down to 20. You can even, I use 20 because you guys need to see it when I'm showing my charts. I could take it down to 10 or 15 on my chart when I can see it. So you have to play with that number so it looks good for you, depending upon what your background colors are. That help, Jim? Okay, here we go. All right, one stock and one stock only. Tell me whether you are thinking of long or short. So, you know, we're going, we're going to be able to do this uh, for about 15 minutes or so, and then I've got to call it a night. I'll do the best that I can. I'm going to pull up TC2000 to look at your stocks. Uh, Walter, you're absolutely right. TC2000 has it. You notice I don't even have it on the charts. It's because the bands are way, way, way too wide. And number two, that when I zoom in on it, the, the bands change. If I had a nine, see what I do at a think or swim, if I look at a six month or nine month chart, but then I zoom in, it does not change the volume of price levels. Yeah, it's not worth it on TC. No, it doesn't work right. Thomas D wants to look at Procter and Gamble. Ah, you try to sneak two in on me, huh? New, 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 new. Procter and Gamble. Yeah, PG's probably going to 101 and a half or so. That's probably not bad. The perfect opportunity would have been one this break of about 104 to 103 and a 
75 level on Friday. Uh, what would be really good is if you get a bounce back up to maybe 104 and then a rollover. So something like this where it comes back up, gets to this level or this level, and then we get a move back down. Perfect. Now this is a third, that's a one hour chart and we're in the oversold condition. I would look for this thing to rise up and do like it did here and rise up to a level maybe lower than the 105. I'd love for it to be lower. Love for it to be in the zone here. Oh, let's put a zone here. Of, that would be a good zone for it to bounce up to. Basically right about there. Okay. Um, C and C, you're long. What are the thoughts? That's actually pretty good compared to a lot of the healthcare plans that are out there. United Health is rallying a little bit because they got they got whacked quite a bit back here when there was a fear that there were going to be major changes to the uh, to the way that drugs were dispensed and whatever. I'm thinking it's somewhere around this. It's going up to maybe the 60, but it's got to break 58 and a quarter. So this level right here, about 58 bucks. And then I'm looking for a move to either 59 or maybe even $60. Probably the, the 200 period moving average. That's what I'm looking at on that one. Okay, Nancy wants to look at MDB. MongoDB. Mongo has held up quite well. What I do here is I like to use a daily chart, a three day chart, and a five day chart. All I'm hitting is the one, three, and five number on the keyboard here. This is actually a weekly chart with a three, two or three day chart. It's basically showing that there's the trading range until we break it. Go back to one. And you can see how it's just kind of meandering around. Go to five day, we had this big move up and this is kind of flagging. Now you have to choose whether you're kind of in in no man's land at the moment on MDB. That's probably because the markets are very, very weak. If the queues start to pick up, you can probably see Mondo, MongoDB actually break out. So keep an eye on it, but be patient. Uh, May H wants Apple short. Uh, the perfect time to have shorted Apple was back up here around 200, 199. Right now we're coming into an area of support around 173. I'd want, if you were going to try to short it, going to be a broken record here. Be patient and wait for the bounce. Bounce up to a level and then roll over. If it goes down into this level right in here and then we get that bounce and go back up, That'd be a perfect opportunity with targets down here at the 145 to 150 level. All right. All right. Hope that helps. Um, Steve G wants to look at AAXN. We got 10 minutes here. Axon Aerospace been very very strong, uh, considering the markets are going lower. Kind of late to be jumping on this puppy, in my opinion. You're going to need a pullback. Keep an eye on it. Maybe a pullback to 61 or so. See what it does at 74 if it continues to move. See what the markets are doing. But the problem I've got here is where would you put a stop? And that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. Okay. 
know, you want to look at a weekly chart on AX and Oh, you're I'm on the weekly. There's the daily. Sorry, you're right. My bad. Thanks, T. Uh, good strong move up. From middle of March to the first of June. All pullbacks were buys. But right now it's moved up. $19.40, uh, 40%. It's probably due for a pullback. One thing that gives me a little bit of pause here is the balance of power is red. It's negative. Could be distribution. I don't know, but it's secondary. Uh, one to MDB as well, right? Uh, Nancy, I covered our uh, MDB. It said no man's land. Apple, yeah, I did cover that on a weekly. We break. I'd be I'd be concerned about breaking this area right in here. Then you've got probably a move down to 155. I'd still like to see a bounce, a reversion to the mean. But thanks, T. Appreciate it. Um, PFE long. Boy, there's the upper level, 43, there's the lower level. I don't see any buy signal at the moment, but if you were looking at it, you're going to need some sort of bullish candle here or bullish pattern. The problem is where's the stop and where's the reward? Because right now, you almost have to wait for a breakout above 42. And then it might move to 43. This one is not going to move very much. If it's already done, move higher to a higher high, set a lower high, another higher high. If it makes the low here, that's a lower, uh, higher low. And then we go up to this $43 and then see what happens there. This one's kind of late in the game to be jumping on board as long, in my opinion. Probably be some better ones out there. Uh, Twitter short and Twitter long. All right. Twitter seems to be wanting to try to get, come back to this 50 at 36 and a half. If it breaks this 3650, it probably fills the gap down to 35 and a quarter or lower. So a short would be say below 3640. However, a long, I don't see a long unless we get some sort of Higher low type of thing that I've been talking about all night long. You're going to need some sort of bullish condition, pull back, set a higher low, and then break out about 39. So Twitter's more of a short than a long for me at the moment. Uh, all right, what I'm going to do, since I'm looking at about five minutes, I'm going to cut off. No more symbols, please. Um, Beyond BYND. This one has very. Wow. It's, it has less than a month's worth of trading. It's looking pretty good. But I couldn't go long up here. I'd have to wait for another pullback. Notice how it's done a zigzag higher. This is a classic move higher. But it's moved from the opening price of 45 to 104. In one month, it's moved 126%. Um, I don't know how long it'll continue to go. I definitely would not recommend here because where would you put the stop? 
Would you put your stop all the way down here at below 80? Would you put your stop uh, below 93? You would probably have to trade on a 30 or 60 minute chart. What kind of volumes we got? Good volume, good volume. Um, no, it's kind of, it's really difficult on these, these ones that have gone uh, uh, ballistic here. So really, really kind of, well, the trend is higher until it's not. It says that you buy any pullback, but as soon as it, if it fails, I mean, be careful. This one could zap you. And what does it move? It moves $9.66 a day, which is almost 10% of its price. That is a lot. I'd be very, very careful with this one. I bet you the spread is pretty wide as well. And I bet you it does not have options. I would pass on that one uh, personally. World pay, nice solid move up. Uh, yeah, world pay looks like you could give it a shot with a stop below 119 and a half. Not bad. Thanks. Oops, I skipped over something. AG long. Now, this is this is one. Um, yeah, I want a daily. It's benefiting from the price of gold, but we're in a downtrend. We gapped up against the trend, and this one looks like it probably wants to head into the mid to high sixes. Oh, it does have options. Okay. Normally don't have options in the first month, but okay. All right, so this is looking pretty good here for long. Thank you. I would just suspect that um, this is silver. SIL, which is the silver miners. And following the price of silver, it's not. It's probably fine following gold. Um, and the gold miners... Nugget and J Nug, the junior miners, uh, both pretty good. Okay. Bob Bell wants to know what my settings are for the stochastics RSI seven comma seven comma three comma three. Now, let me bring up edit this. 773 was RSI 7, is the RSI period, stochastics period 7, percent K3. Some do not have that fourth one, the percent D or the percent K. One of them is missing. And the percent D I use is 3. And that basically puts the other line. So 773 creates the green line. Now let's do. Uh, and set the percent D is the blue line, the trailer. You're welcome. Uh, Denny wants to look at IQ short. Oh, yes. IQ? Uh, I'd love to see a bounce up. To reverse of the mean or break below 1790, I tend not to, to short. Uh, let's see, what does it move? Only moves 90 cents a day, which though is 5%. I tend not to short um, stocks below about 20 or 25, but it does look like it's a possible short. Love to see a bounce back up, reverse to the mean first, maybe up to the Red dots here in 1975 or so, and then a roll back over. That would be ideal. Uh, Nan P wants to know, does balance of power volume tell you different things? Yes. Yes. Uh, the balance of power is a proprietary indicator by um, the folks from Worden Brothers, and it uh, basically says what institutions are accumulating, 
uh, or distributing the stock. Uh, a reversion to the mean is nothing more than if I have a, I call it a moving average. This right here is a reversion to the mean. This was a reversion to the mean bounce. This one was kind of an attempt to do a reversion to the mean. Uh, wow, that's not very good. Right in here. We did a move back here, we bounced. Now, you can use the moving averages, but you can also use Support and resistance lines, which I did here. It's a reversion of the mean. You could also use um, the volatility stops. You can see how it basically has done a reversion to the mean being the trend line. If you get too far away from this trend line, it will probably bounce in your face. Same way on the, uh, but the opposite way on the way up. If stocks get too far away, they'll pull back. They tend to move in waves, up or down. Okay, we're looking at, is it too late to short Oxy and broke December support? Perfect time to short Oxy was back here at 62 and a half. I don't know. It all depends on where oil goes. And right now, what we got in oil? Oil was in a free fall for the last two or three days. Watch for a bounce. This right here is ripe for a short covering rally just rip your face off rally which gold and oil do tend to do regularly and it could zigzag up and get back up into 5650 could do it in one day all we need is a, uh, an announcement from saudi arabia or something like that or something um, that threatens the oil supply and this will rally hard But yes, I, I think it probably is without a bounce first. Snap. Now we're on our last couple here. Snap long. Yeah. Watch to see what Snap does when it gets to 12.35. Uh, one problem is Snap only moves 50 cents a day. It is four and a quarter percent. And right now, where would the uh, stop be? It'd have to be down here. 75 cents lower. I'd love for it to come back up and rally back down to the 8 or 17 exponential and then give a bullish candle pattern. That's what I do. Marvell, one of my favorite semis. This one did a Let's do the quad lines here. This one, Marvel pulled back a little bit too deep. The markets are really, really hurting this one. This would have been perfect if he'd have stopped right here at the 50 and rallied back towards the high. I'd want, I'd want this one to get over 23 and a quarter to 23.50. Make it to a higher high and a higher low. I would definitely say that. Um, Southern Long. Utilities. Oh, yeah. Now, it's been pulled back pretty hard. Um. This could just do a reversion to the mean to go back and retest the highs at 54.40 and then roll back over. But we never know. 
we could have we could have said that same thing back here in the uh, middle of May. Could have said that here at the beginning of April. It went up to the prior highs, it pulled back, and established a higher low. Now, what did it do here? It established a lower low. You've got to get it up over this 5380 to 5390, call it 54, before it changes trend. Probably even get above that, come back and hold and set it a higher low. That one's kind of tricky. Okay, we've covered all the ones, but I did see down at the bottom, uh, David H., I don't use the 21. I use an exponential 8 and an exponential 17. It's pretty close to the 21, to 20 simple or 21 simple. Not much different. And Maxim G wants to know, does a cent move matter if it's a percent move is higher or pretty high? The answer to me is I pay bills and uh, have to pay my commissions in dollars. So I want, um, I want a mover. I want something that moves 50, 75 cents a dollar a day so I can make, uh, make some money because I want to make dollars rather than pennies. If I to only make any money off of the others, I gotta buy a whole lot of shares. Uh, does it matter for options? Well, you have to figure out whether it's gonna move. I mean, if, if the stock only moves in pennies, the options are not gonna move that much either, really. Um, you'll have to decide what the percentages on the moves are and whether that'll cover your bills, meaning cover the commissions primarily. I will do that, Frank. Uh, let me give everybody the uh, YouTube channel. After we're done, probably give, give me after about 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour. Thanks, David. I just, you know, David, I've, I've tended to forget a lot of the rationale behind my rules of thumb. <laughs> As you get older, there's only so, so much room in your brain for new information. So I have to decide which goes out when I put something new in. And a lot of times I just say, you know what? I, I, I just remember my rules of thumb. I've forgotten maybe so long ago, is how I, I arrived at some of the rules, especially over options. Anyway, all right. Thanks very much for everybody coming, uh, coming out and joining us. Think about trying a trial, two-month trials. Uh, really, really inexpensive. I think you would worth it. All right, you guys take care. Aloha.